Well, hello, traders and investors. I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. Take a look at these markets. Doing it from a neoclassical perspective, we're looking at supply and demand on the charts. We're using that information to make wise decisions about where to enter, where to exit, which way to point. What's the trend? We do it on all time frames, and we do it regularly uh, at TA Today. Join the community, folks. Uh, it's where it's at. We're doing a two-for-one special. I've mentioned this before, and we'll continue to do that as long as people just drift in. Uh, I'm not going to uh, take too many folks. Uh, and and personally, I'm I'm the 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 lead on taking new folks in, helping them get up to speed, making sure they get something out of the site. If you want to be part of that, uh, as long as I'm doing this, that's great. I know I won't do it forever, uh, but I am doing it to start with because I do want to get this thing off the ground and uh, uh, focus on uh, making sure it's a success. So if you're interested, uh, just come over, hit the Join the Community, and uh, uh, see if you want. Uh, you can always send me email as well, T-A-T at tatoday.com so tom apple tom t-a-t at tatoday.com let's look at the numbers uh, you had a down day today uh, in europe especially in the dax in particular why is that well trump has decided that he wants to talk the dollar down everybody else has been playing this game the dollar keeps going up so he's decided oh we'll just make the dollar go down and solve our problems right everybody can quit taking advantage of us if our dollar is cheaper than theirs tit for tat type stuff problem is, is the fed probably isn't going to go for the tit for tat and the fed's probably going to raise rates and i don't see anywhere else in the world that people are raising rates so we'll see how that one plays out gold silver up big uh, nice big spike uh, maybe we ought to take a look at that again here if we got a chance today uh, bonds of course uh, rallying as the dollar and as the stock market sells off you end the day just slightly red on the s p 500 you actually flip it around on the nasdaq certainly on the russell the ndx finishes down we had apple after the bell apple hits the earnings apple says good things about their uh, sales and the iphone just keeps powering on and that's got apple um, pushing higher after the bell we looked at all three of them, Facebook, Amazon, Apple. Apple was the one to me that looked like it had a chance to uh, potentially go up. And it looks like it is going to pop tomorrow, uh, two or three bucks on the open. That, of course, will help uh, the, um, uh, the markets, in particular the NDX and the NASDAQ. But as I've said before, those guys are pretty stretched. So I think it's going to be a tough thing to keep them up there. Let's look at the dollar first. So the dollar breaks under a swing point low. Uh, the volume was on that bar 2580 you don't have enough volume but you are going to break it down on this time frame uh, the daily is going to break lower on the weekly you're doing the full retest regen now 2567 is the number uh, comes into 2568 you got the fed tomorrow i'm thinking they'll try to push under that to tomorrow and then uh, if the Fed is hawkish, which I believe is the expectation still, uh, I don't know if it's going to stay under that. Matter of fact, I suspect it isn't, but we'll see if that's true or not. So that's the uh, dollar story. Speaking of the dollar, let's go over and look at the ox markets real quick before we go to the uh, S&P. And I'm doing that because we want to look at gold and see what gold looks like. So gold comes off the retrace, gets the big bounce, a little volume coming into this guy. And that top over here was 15576. We do 15582. So we get over it, uh, slightly back under it, doing as much volume. Gold is going to try to break back into these big bars. Remember, that's where it stymied before. You know, so we looked at this once before. We would said, okay, well, it can get up into these bars. I mean, that's possible. I didn't think it would, but it did. And so that was this little range here, and that bottom of that bar was there, right? So it gets in there, tries, tries again, falls back. Now it comes back and is doing it again. This is the big test, right? Because, because you had the big run. Now you got a little bit of a pullback, right? So now you're going to try to break over it. And if you break over it, you're going to go after these two bars. In other words, if you get about a third of the way into it, that's about as 
that's that becomes the target and so I think uh, this is a key area again fed tomorrow uh, you've also got some earnings uh, coming up uh, with Amazon uh, and Facebook actually tomorrow so I think that's going to be the story let's look at the GDX while we're here and see if it broke over and it didn't same sort of thing so it pushed up into that area again uh, still hasn't broke over it these of course have been stronger uh, because they're stocks and the stocks have been doing better let's go to the S&P 500 uh, let's take a quick look here uh, I did glance at these before I came on so what I saw was that in each of these cases what you did is you pushed down with more volume today now that's typically not a good thing uh, the low was uh, 226804 yesterday. You got under it 226721. You push more volume. The full retest is 2264. So you didn't do the full retest. You're still holding another hammer type reversal, but more volume. Again, this suggests that this isn't done uh, with what it needs to do down here. In other words, you had more volume, more sellers as you came down same thing on the nasdaq and the ndx was the same thing and if i go to the russell the russell was slightly different it was an inside bar also did more volume though so in all these cases the indexes are not telling us that this is over and matter of fact the indexes are suggesting that there's more work to be done now i wouldn't be surprised if we do get a little pop in the morning on the NASDAQ in particular NDX as a result of the Apple earnings I don't think Apple can move the market like it used to uh, it's still a heavy weighting but it's only about uh, uh, three percent pop two and a half percent pop after the bell so I don't think Apple's gonna do it it's gonna have to come from somewhere else I suspect it's gonna have to come from somewhere else when we're talking about the sectors in general if we pull up the uh, technology sector uh, that sector pulls back, does more volume on the test back in uh, as well. And we're not talking big volume here, but a little bit more volume. Uh, let's look at these other ones that have been strong, the industrials. And that one pushes back in also more volume today. How about discretionary? Discretionary a little bit more, not that much. Uh, this one actually does look okay still. And that's where uh, Amazon and Apple live. So uh, we'll see. Uh, how much of a pop it can get financials doji just range trading how about the semis and the semiconductors continue to pull back uh, not that much volume though into a swing point high so retest regen t attempt uh, that doesn't look bad it just looks like it can trade lower so i don't see anything here that's suggesting to me that this market's going to just you know go off and rally without stopping again but um you got a doji here reversal yeah i mean market is not you know i'm not bearish i just think the market has more work to do and it still looks that way when i look at these uh numbers here tonight so uh that's that's the way it looks to me let's let's see you know i want to show you you know i talk about post earnings play sometimes and you know they're they're one of the safest plays you have in a in a market that's strong where you're having a pullback uh, in a particular stock that just had earnings and you can have two types of earnings you can have one that just you know takes off and doesn't come back or you can have one that kind of consolidates and then continues to take off or you can have one that actually retraces and I was going to show you one that retraced uh, let me pull one up here uh, Dow Chemical is the one I was looking at so here's a good example of a post earnings play where there's a buy signal right so, so here's your your bump on earnings this is your earnings bar you get the bump and then you retrace and as you retrace you come back into your prior swing point high that you broke and when you're doing a comparison you're looking at the breakout volume the volume on the breakout bar it's this bar here the first of these you're looking at that bar and then you're also looking over at this swing point highs volume whichever one is the greater is the one you want to focus on and in this case it is this bar so we look at that bar and we say okay so as we come back is the volume greater or less it's less we we know that when you come back you can do about you know all the way down to about a full retest regen which is about the bottom third 
This didn't quite make it. That's a rule of thumb. Uh, you know, you have to expect it can get in here. It doesn't have to, but that's that's your target. And so as this thing comes back, right, this becomes the target area that you want to try and buy. In other words, think about what you're doing here. You're saying, hey, this had a good earnings release, right? Pushed higher on earnings. As we come back, there's fewer and fewer sellers. Where do I expect them to buy it? Well, it's right in here, right? So what can I do? I can buy it right in here and do what? Put a stop up underneath it. I could put it up underneath this if I wanted to. But I'm in a point where I don't have to risk very much. And what I'm doing is trying to shoot back for these highs at least. And then I can do my reward risk and I know my probabilities are good. You hear a lot of people talk about reward risk. They tell you, you know, they need, they need a 3 to 1 or they need a 4 to 1 or whatever. But they don't talk about probability of success, right? P.S. You don't see that. Because nobody knows what the probabilities of any of those patterns they tell you about. You know, I mean, there are there is some work that's been done on those. But really, you know, the failures come as a result of the market having a different character to it. A post earnings play in a bullish market is a high probability play on a retrace into a breakout with less volume, period. That's a high probability play. And so that's an example of it. I know I had uh, a couple of emails the last few days asking me that, so I thought I'd give you an example. Tomorrow, uh, I'm expecting Facebook, I'm expecting Amazon not to do that well. I'm expecting that we're going to see Apple kind of a pop and then probably pull back. I don't expect this market to rally uh, straight up from here. But I want to be clear, I'm not bearish on this market. I'm just suggesting this market's going to have a hard time just going straight up again. We'll see how it plays out. Have a great one. I'll see you next time. And seriously, if you're interested, come join the community uh, and learn how to take care of your money and have it work for you. Take care. Good night.